What's up trade pros today we have another special YouTube video for you all and what we're going to be doing today is talking about the buy the dip strategy for beginners. Now as you all may know I am a prominently futures trader but this buy the dip strategy I will show you is effective for all assets any assets i'm gonna prove that to you guys we're gonna be looking at stocks you can see walt disney is up on my screen right now but we're gonna be looking at stocks and futures on how to buy this dip strategy so it consists of a few components and we're gonna talk about all those right after this intro but before we get to the intro i want you guys to smash that like button hit that subscribe button to notify you when we do drop videos and we go live and then ring that little bell to do the same. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get through this intro. So guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the buy the dip trading strategy. So this is a momentum strategy that continues the upside trend in any market. So the idea of this strategy is to buy into a slight pullback of a longer term bullish trend, right? What you're doing is getting long an asset at a dip as it pulls back into that dip. So this is a one of the easiest and one of the first strategies you learn as a trader. Um, what we do is look for really strong assets, whatever it is you're trading, um, make sure the trend is to the upside. And then what we do is break it down and look to buy these dips. So what you're doing is buying a clear support zone where price is expected to turn back into. So why don't we get started with just a plain screen here and we'll explain it, break it down. There are just a few components. The way I see it, there's only two components to any buy the dip strategy, whether I'm trading futures or if I'm trading stocks, options, whatever it is, two main components that I start with that I want to get you guys acquainted with before we dive into the nitty gritty. Now there's other aspects to this. Obviously, if you want to get a stronger buy the dip strategy, you're going to have to learn order flow and other tools like that, especially in futures. However, these two components are very easy to understand for beginners. So let's break them down. One, find a high, let the high break. Number two, wait for confirmation, right? Very, very simple. Number one, doesn't necessarily need to be a high break. It could be a pullback into any area of support, but for beginners, what I like to do is break it down to just finding a high that's recently broken. We can do 1.5 where we look for a pull back into the impulse wave. But number 1.5 is a little more advanced. The easiest way is to find a high that was recently broken on any asset and wait for that pullback. So what does that look like? If we're going step by step here and we're looking at these charts, the buy the dip is in a bull trend. This is all it looks like. We could buy the dip in a downtrend. It's just at that point, we're trying to call a bottom and the momentum isn't really with us. We want to find an asset that's already moving to the upside. So the momentum is with us. Now, if we take step number one, this is a high that was broken. This is a high that was broken. This is a high that was broken. What we're doing is waiting for the price to pull back into it so we can buy this dip. This right here is what we call the dip. And then at this area, at that dip, we will have to decide what our confirmation is and wait for that confirmation. There are a few nuances in this buy the dip strategy because for a bull trend to continue, we have to print higher highs and higher lows, correct? So if we're still on number one right here, the first part of our plan, if we need to buy higher highs and higher lows for the bull trend to continue, we need a bull trend to buy the dip, right? Buy the dip. Necessi not necessarily. We don't really need a bull trend, but this is for the higher probability buy the dip opportunity. We need to see a bull trend, higher highs and higher lows. Now, the one nuance with the bull trend, after we break this top, the pullback or the drop for the dip does not necessarily align with the top 100% of the time all the time, right? We could get as low as, remember 1.5, as we talked about, this is the impulse start. And we could get anywhere in between. So we could stop here, we could stop here, we could stop here. If we push lower than the impulse, then this kills the higher high slash higher low concept, right? Instead of a higher low, we now get a lower low. So in terms of the buy the dip strategy, what we're waiting for is number two, we need a confirmation at one of these levels to tell us that this area will actually hold. So depending on what you trade, what time frame you trade, 
typically, I want to see a green candle close and form at one of these levels, right? I want to see a green candle close and form at one of these levels. It's a lot different on the futures market, but even in any other market that we watch, for example, I'll show you the stocks that I'm looking at as well, how the buy the dip strategy would have worked there. But what I need to see is a nice strong bull candle come in on big volume while this whole dip comes out on dying out, drying out volume. This is what's going to convince me that the confirmation is there. So if we take a look at a few examples here, we're going to break it down. Let's go to Disney, right? Disney, if we grab some of these lines, if I grab this line, and this was the prior top right here, right? This was the prior top. So you can see what Disney has done, right? Disney has recently broken one of the tops, one of these very pivotal tops right here. We can outline that, right? It pops up, it comes back down. Okay, we get a nice green close. We get a few green closes, right? The idea here is you want to start buying at that level, at that broken top after this close, right? So it dips again, right? And you're looking to layer in around this top, risking about 2% of the account, right? 2% per trade, which will put our stop somewhere here, maybe even here, um, depending on this move. And the anticipation is we're trying to get back into this recent top that we had just printed. This is going to be the target area. Now, once this top breaks, what could happen, right? We could get another potential for a long idea after this confirmation, right? The only thing is it hasn't really broken this top that well. What we've seen here is from 112 all the way to about 128, a pretty significant 16 or so dollar pop, right? This pop right here, 128 all the way up to 134, that's $4, right? That's not the same. So what we could do in this scenario is even wait for it to pull back if it does pull back somewhere in this gap area. The lowest it should pull back is 112. But what we need to see is a pretty extended long green candle on some strong volume, right? Was this green candle on strong volume? Eh, not bad, not terrible, but you can see there was some downside volume that came into this. So maybe we would have waited maybe for some of these candles, right? This green candle spike, amazing. Is this green candle on high volume? Not necessarily. So that may kill our idea, right? The descending volume is good for the downside, but we need to see this green big volume candle close on a lot of volume, right? So we need something more significant than the volume average here. So will this qualify this trade to get us long at 128? Not necessarily, right? We need to see more information based on volume. Now, if you're trading a smaller time frame, if we go to a four hour, let's say, four hour time frame, we could do the same, right? We could look for those strong four hour candles, strong four hour candles to close in a strong bullish way with strong bullish volume that will get us into some of these trades. Now, if we take a look at another asset here, Facebook, you can see what Facebook has done recently. We just broke this top, right? We had, we had a prior top right here. We managed to break it, pulls back into it. Look at this, amazing green candle. What are we doing? We're starting to buy this stock massive volume, right? For the next push into the resistance point. Same thing just happened here. We just broke this top, popped up on good volume, kind of pulling back on weak volume, which is great. If we do manage to pull back into this top in the 250 with a nice green candle, this becomes a very viable long opportunity on some strong volume. So we'll see how that shapes up. Microsoft is another great asset here that did the exact same. So what we've seen on Microsoft for this buy the dip strategy, did we come back into this dip? Not necessarily. Did we come back into this dip? Yes. And what we're looking for is the first green candle. There it is. How's the volume? Pretty good. How's the volume here? Pretty good, right? This is an opportunity with the stop below for the continued push into the new highs. Now, how do we buy the dip here on Microsoft? How would we buy the dip based on our just two criteria. We got to wait for this top to get broken. We got to wait for that 215 to 216 top to get broken. Let it flush higher on some good volume. Let it drop on weak volume. Give me that nice green candle on a good volume bar. And we're off to the races yet again. Buying the dip doesn't have to be complicated. Now, when we talk about the futures market, what I like to do on the futures market is look at a 10 tick chart on the S&P 500. Whatever asset you like, I'm looking at a more macro candle chart, right? If it's gold, maybe a 20 tick. If it's a uh, NASDAQ, maybe a 20 tick. But on the s and I'm looking at this 10 tick chart. And this is, this is what we saw today even. What did we have to do? All we had to do on today's session was wait for the most recent top to get broken, right? This is where we opened. If we want to buy the dip, number one, we could buy it down right at the open because it's holding in, the impulse, a little riskier. Number two, you wait for the pop, you wait for the drop, 10 tick bullish close, right? You got two of them buy it, right? Hold it out, buy it. 
Same thing here. Breaks, what happens? We break the top, we pull back into it, bull candle close, buy it, right? If you were buying these tops, just to give you guys an example, from 68, now trading 80, right? That's 12 points, $600 per contract. How long did this take, right? From 12 p.m. today, now it is 2.36 p.m. So just under two hours and 40 minutes for this extended move. Now, again, with the S&P, we have a little more of a nuance. We want to wait for prices to break four plus points. That is the average true range, right, on the S&P. So we got to break this 78 by four plus points, putting us into the 82, 83 area for us to pull back for us to buy the dip again for the next move higher. We will no longer be buying the dip should we start breaking these impulse areas. No matter what support we have below, it becomes a lesser probability, lesser high probability trade. So again, the buying the dip strategy, especially for beginners, doesn't have to be super complicated. We broke it down in just two easy steps for those who are new and want to test it in demo accounts before they begin trading this thing live. So test it out, see how it works. Let me know in the comments down below how you like it. And I wanna see you guys at our next webinar. I wanna show you guys how you could read order flow so you can make this strategy that much stronger. So here's what George has to say about our webinar. But before we cut into that, I hope everyone enjoyed this video, had a great day, learned a lot, and smash that like button and join us here at Trade Pro Academy. We'll see you guys shortly. Take care, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Hello, and thank you for watching this video. I wanna take a moment to invite you to an exclusive online trading masterclass. In this event, you're gonna learn three key things to help take your trading to the next level. Number one, we're gonna teach you a complete price action strategy used by professional traders on a daily basis. Plus, give you the checklist so you know how to check off each step to qualify the opportunities. Number two, we're gonna teach you how to use advanced order flow analytics to help you qualify high probability, low risk trade setups on a daily basis. Plus, we're gonna teach you how to use that order flow to disqualify the trades that you're used to taking that end up being stopped out. Number three, we're gonna show you how you can apply all of this information with a small account because you can start small and scale up. In fact, that's the only way to start and a lot of our traders are doing it in our community on a daily basis. This is an exclusive offer you can get online only at this event. I look forward to seeing you at this masterclass and teaching you these three secrets of highly profitable day trading. Take care and have a great day.